Well, hello everybody. We're back to uh, Pirates on the Farm again. Ye Pirates Workshop. This is my leather shop normally, and it's also a place where I can do uh, some better indoor uh, filming. Now, this is a continuation, which hopefully will just uh, almost seamlessly prop, pop through. Uh, from when I was working on the uh, piece that was broken on that saw, the scroll saw. This is the one of the pieces. There's actually three here. And the idea is to get them all three in the right places together and then find some way to glue them in or otherwise get them to hold uh, from where they were and right now it's almost there the question becomes how do you glue these two little tiny ears or weld them to this, it's cast aluminum, so it's very fragile to begin with. And how do you do that? And keep, uh, keep from uh, just making another spot for it to break because of the heating involved in welding. So I put a bit of thought into this and I decided I would go with uh, this stuff JB Weld. JB Weld is not a sponsor of my videos. I don't have any yet. Generally, I cover up whatever product I'm using because if they're not paying their way, I'm not going to advertise their ass. But the reality is, there's some things that in a video you you ought to know, or you you might pick the wrong stuff to use. JB Weld is just an, e an epoxy that you mix in equal amounts. The fact is though is I've seen and used JB Weld for probably about 30 years and there are certain things where it just works really perfect and I think on this application it will. Now I'm gonna zoom the camera in in a minute when I actually start working on this because you don't really need to see my ugly mug and uh, you'll see what I'm planning to do and how I'm going to put this together. First though I need to find a bit of sandpaper and uh, as soon as I find that I'll prep this up and you can just watch the whole the whole show of it. Uh, it will need about 24 hours to cure and uh, then the uh, cured part I think I'd want to give it a little bit more than that I can mill off the parts of the JB weld that would be in the way and uh, be able to uh, you know drill the parts redrill the holes and put it on that saw where it's supposed to be cross your fingers and might we might get lucky that the JB Weld will have just enough flex built into it that it will keep from cracking as the original uh, part did. So let me get the sandpaper and get back to you. Okay, I've got the sandpaper. Now I'm going to try and focus this more on what's going on here. And I'll just try to talk you through it a little bit. There we go. Those are the three pieces. I'm going to zoom into them a little bit more. There you go. And uh, we may as well get rolling here and get her done. Okay, be that way. All right, this is the piece, 
and basically it uh, this is the broken one of the broken chunks it must be flat this way and because this part slips over the uh, frame of, of the scroll saw and then a screw goes through that little hole there and through this one when it's in place and you can tilt or move it up and down slightly so that you can level your your table on the scroll saw so the thing to do right now is find my chunk of sandpaper sand this <clears throat> mix up the weld and make the part and get her get her done this is just some 60 grit sandpaper I found anything 100 grit doesn't matter all you're trying to do is uh, make a few scratches to give the um, J and B weld the epoxy the ability to hold it and there you can kind of see that's how it was before I did any sanding and now that it sanded a little bit you can see there's scratches in it we're going to do this one again this way Okay, so that should hold us on that. Now I'm looking at this and trying to figure what's going to be the best way of putting these together. Now I actually think putting the plate on the outside might be the better part. If you're wondering why it sounds so loud to sand this, it's because I ended up having to attach the microphone to the bench. That should be fine like that. Okay, now, step number two is going to be some kind of a backing because a thin little line of what's actually good isn't going to work all that swell. Now of course I couldn't find a pair of tin snips so I ended up going to find a pair. So what I'm going to do right now though is draw this and cut out a backing pencil here in the drawer that should do that so what I'm going to do first is figure out how wide it needs to be basically that's it's about the width although I'm tempted since this is going to be an outside piece I'm tempted to do it right here. Let's bring that down to, I think, probably about here. Okay. Now, if it doesn't work, then you hear me cussing, but uh, pretty sure we can make it work. Okay. 
This stuff here is tin flashing. It's really handy. Um, if you need to use a backing for something, uh, this stuff is handy to have around. I don't know how much use you're ever going to get out of it. Generally, my use for it lasts uh, for about whatever the job was I needed it for right then. And then try to find it again later it can be a real pain in the ass. So now we have that cut, and this is the kind of a cut that would just love to cut the hell out of your fingers. So what we're going to do is remove all those ripples by making a nice even cut along it. Okay, put this over here. There we go. First cut's a little wacky there too. I actually think that should be okay. Let's get another good cut right here though. Pretty good. Get rid of that little piece of scrapola. And have a look at it. Then what we're going to try to do is fit this to that. This way, the table will still be able to swivel up and down the way it's supposed to. Take care of that. You don't really need a big pair of tin snips like I'm using here for this. I actually might have a, something a little better here. These make that curve a lot easier. Okay, so we're doing that. And 
next step Next step is to flatten this out a little bit. Then you rough it up. And then the last move. Generally, if I'm using epoxy or anything like that, I use acetone as a kind of, uh, you might call it a primer or something and believe it or not I've lost one of those little dingles I'm hoping it fell over while I was cutting the tin I will look for it that was a good cut I guess when I moved something I dragged it into that drawer oh well anyhow this part here I think is important for anything you're doing yeah, that is to uh, wipe down any grease, dirt, dust, anything that could be on it that could interfere with your bond in uh, putting epoxy on something. Like I said, generally I use uh, acetone that but I didn't have any handy out here and alcohol does a pretty good job so we leave that cleaned part there and we do this one and then this one Okay, so at this point now we're going to do like a dry fit. And what that means is I want to make sure I have these in exactly the right spots. That one would be that. This one should go here. Okay. One and two.
Okay, I think that's going to fit up good. Now we mix up our uh, our goodie. I like to use things you can throw away when it comes to mixing epoxies and stuff like that. And probably one of the easiest and cheapest is popsicle sticks. Except that you want to square hard on them after a while. So what I generally do is have several there. And I square off the ends of a couple of them. And that normally works pretty good. Now let's get to Mr. J and B. stuff used for some unbelievable repairs back when I first was exposed to it various garages and uh, part stores and things like that had a little display with uh, things that had been glued together with JB Weld and they welded steel, aluminum, uh, stuck, not welded, but, or glued would be the better word. Uh, one of the things I remember was a, a uh, dowel, pretty thick dowel, and a pretty heavy duty, whatever. It might have been oak or something. It had a golf ball glued on it. And uh, all the customers were invited to try to uh, see if they could rip apart any of the joints. Well, these aren't exactly little, and uh, anyway, I gave it a shot, and believe it or not, I couldn't tear that golf ball off of the uh, dowel, which really surprised me, because up until that end, I used to think I could do about anything. Okay, so they have these uh, to where you have to poke something in them get it started. I'm hoping one of these slivers will help me out here. No, it's not going to be strong enough. And I have some needles. Then. These scissors are something else. When I get to doing some leather stuff and you watch them getting used on that, you're going to want to run out and buy yourself a pair. They work really good. All right, well, most epoxy, you uh, squeeze equal amounts. Thank you. 
here we go. And then out of those equal amounts, you want to mix them together. And then they make a color that's in between the two that you got, which in this case would probably be some kind of gray. put this on here this down on it. About there. I'd recommend wearing gloves when you do this. Not that the epoxy is any real kind of problem, but it's going to make your hands look stupid. I'm also trying to get a little bit of this where uh, the end would actually be doing like a butt weld or something. The idea is just to have enough there that it wants to stick and hold.
Okay. Now, I'm going to get this off my hand. I hold it. And we leave that set. Sometime tomorrow. And then I'll clean it up and we'll put it on. And I think we'll have a scroll saw. And then I can start scrolling out some knife handles. And we'll go into the knife business. Well, I'll tell you this, this alcohol is working really good on this. I wasn't sure it would. I really was not sure it would do that. That's lucky. Okay, so you guys who are like to fix junk up all the time, like me, there's one to put in your bag of tricks. 91% alcohol, isopropyl that is does work for cleaning JB Weld off your fingers if you do it quickly. Get one more little bug of boo along there and that might be it. So This has been a video of Mr. Hands. Anybody out here remember Mr. Hands on Saturday Night Live? Back when it used to actually be funny. Okay, see? pretty much cleaned anything off of them that was on them. I've got to say that uh, I'm rather pleased this turned out the way it did. So, mm -hmm. I guess this will be the hands waving goodbye and in the next scene I should be cleaning this thing up and putting it on the scroll saw. So, Thanks for watching this far, and we'll go on to the next phase tomorrow. Bye-bye.